Welcome to Late Night Writers. On this episode, we talk to Joe. I know, Gretchen. Joe used to come into our office a long time ago. He still does now, but he started off with camels, and he would come in and start to talk to us about his camels, and now he's gone from that to... A zoo. That's right. Yep. They bought a zoo. Yes, they did. Yep, they do, and they are. And their um, outlook with their zoo is completely different than other zoos. It's up front or up close and personal. So pretty interesting. Yeah, so enjoy. Welcome to Late Night Writers. I'm Gretchen, and I'm joined by my mom, Kristen, my grandma, Debbie, and Joe. Joe, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, I own a zoo, Indian Creek Zoo in Lambertville, Michigan. And uh, we started out with a Watusi buffalo, and the schools wanted to start coming. We started adding animals, and today we have 77 species and 300 animals on 41 acres. Unbelievable. It's crazy. Yeah. So was it your idea to start a zoo? or? Um, people ask me what happened, how did you start a zoo, and my dad would say I fell off a turnip truck and hit my head. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably the best explanation. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't see. The last movie I've ever seen, this is a true story, was We Bought a Zoo. Oh so they don't God. let me go to the oh movie theaters no more. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, and that's what happened. And now, like I say, we have two giraffes and and all kinds of primates and uh, 77, I think 77 different species. That's crazy. How many, did you, how many species did you have when you first opened to the public? Mm-hmm. We probably had about... 20 species and it was just a lot of farm animals and uh stuff like that the schools wanted to come Mm -hmm. and it really made it good because a lot of inner city kids didn't know where egg was the corner store and one Mm -hmm. of the things that really surprised me when me and you think of a a store we think of kroger's Mm -hmm. they think of a little market at the corner Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we thought for education purposes and we brought a lot of the kids out from the national youth sports program at ut and just thought it was great to give back and show them. And by doing that, we've grown from 10,000 guests the first year, and five years later we have a, over 100,000 guests. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So it's a, it's kind of an up close and personal is what our niche is. Mm-hmm. And um, we have sloth experiences. You can come in and you can pet the sloth. You can feed them. Mm-hmm. You can That's have a so giraffe cool. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh, a lot of animals. We do camel rides. You know, you can hmm. get on, mm. you can get on uh, the camels and ride them, and and it just Don't up close and personal. I think works for a lot of people. So, <laughs> the pregnant women come in, and if they look like they're eight months, we give them a free camel ride because we're trying to help them out. <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. a, <laughs> a two hump camel. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> what are your hours then? We're open from ten to five. Uh, okay. Seven days a week, mm-hmm. and we do a lot of charity stuff at night, and uh, mm-hmm. do stuff for autism and uh, mm-hmm. Christian radio stations. And uh, we just had one of the things that really touched me was um, we had School of the Blind out, and oh, with wow. School of the Blind, um, we sat down with them and had a baby kangaroo, and we let them feel the pouch and mm-hmm. put their fingers in. We taped up an alligator's mouth and let them feel it and sit That's down. Cool. Yeah. and uh, touch the giraffe. And uh, most of our animals are really approachable. So let them touch them, and we did that with everything. And then it was kind of cute at the end. I said, let's get a picture. And they all lined up, and they were all looking different ways. Aww. You know? But they loved the animals and loved touching it. Their parents would say, now, this giraffe is twice as tall as your dad. He's 12 mm-hmm. foot tall at mm-hmm. the time. And they were getting, you know, getting everything. So that's the stuff that... Mm-hmm. that makes me keep doing it because yeah. I, I love it when you can do that. You had to see a difference with them when they first came as to when they left then, and the just the reaction has to be incredible for what you see. And Yeah, we what, had uh, what, yeah. this story, Just you want to cry when you hear this one. Um, we get, you know, five, six, seven hundred people a day come. So you're, you're walking around, people are there, and they called me. They said, you got to come out here, you got to come out here. There was a girl that was probably 12, 13 years old who has never spoke or anything. Mm-hmm. And we get a lot of autistic and different things. 
and her parents was with her, seen the giraffe, and she spoke. Oh, oh my God. For the That's first awesome. time in her life. And you're just like, are you serious? Oh. And wow. yeah, she did. And they were bo- the parents were both crying, and it was like oh, wow. everybody around the staff's crying. You know, oh. you're going, okay. That's really but neat. it's uh, the people with special needs, and you'll you'll see it. Um, I just watched a thing on TV on America's. You know, a kid was autistic, and he sat behind a piano, and he and you can YouTube it and look at it, and you're going, "This guy's singing perfect, but he can't yeah. talk." Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going, "How the brain and how that works with God?" You know, you're just going, right. "Wow, wow, wow!" Right. What a wow. right. Yeah. yeah. So so you know, I'm in four or five different businesses, and this is the business that that I love with the people and yeah. the kids and the animals. I, I get up every day. I live on the property. Mm. And uh, to see it grow and see that people love to see what they see and what they do is so neat. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I met you guys out here buying fence and stuff. You know, this is my, yeah. <laughs> this, this is uh, where we come to get the stuff and make sure. And, and I don't know what the one's called. Is it mud guard or something? Mud management. That, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, yep. you know, mud when you got an 1,800-pound mm-hmm. giraffe, mm-hmm. I come out and say, Paul, what do I do? It's muddy in front of the gate. What do you got? He says, well, what do you got? I go, a giraffe. He goes, okay. Maybe I'll sell you two of these. You know? <laughs> but it works, you know, and the fence and different things. So it's a, it's a great story. I love, I love your product, and I love what you guys do. Thank you so family. much. We're so glad that you come here. And you use the non-climb fencing for your animals because yes. I'm sure it probably – Keep them in and keep other things out. Yeah. I'm sure. I know you have your area where the animals are, but do you have other animals that come, like predator animals? Do you have to be yes, careful I of have, that? Yes, I have. Well, I got. I bought all my ten foot fencing for the whole park. Is uh, the nylock or whatever it is? Mm-hmm. It's a high tensile mm-hmm. that goes around the whole outside of a zoo, mm-hmm. and that's a USDA rule. So mm-hmm. if something okay. gets out, it's still contained. Mm-hmm. And then we use the product inside because it's not it's not going to rust. It's not going to mm-hmm. like today. I came out here for some because we have baby goats. Mm-hmm. Paul takes me out back said, "Here's what it is. We use it for the foals and different things." And I said, "Perfect. That's what it is." So, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, you want to make it in a, any business. A, your customer is your boss in your mm-hmm. business, my business, my golf course, my restaurant. So zoo's the same thing. So it's got to be aesthetically right. We come out here, buy the product, we put it up nice, we use steel poles, we you know, we do it real nice, mm-hmm. pour the concrete, and that's our boss. No matter what you think in the world, I don't care what you're selling, at Rite Aid, your boss is the customer. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have to treat them right, you have to know what they want. And in my business, we figured out at an early part because of Facebook, was the up close and personal. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's that's the things that, so you say, it's okay, this is It's to work. you, not too many people. Right. I mean, well, zoos alone, I mean, it's just, they're the zoos, which are wonderful, but you take it a step further, Eve, then, with and what you do with experience. your... make it an experience. Yeah. And here's, a, here's kind of a crazy fact that um, it's hard to believe. We're at a conference in uh, Texas, and the USDA was speaking, which monitors all zoos. It's USDA. And the lady got up and spoke. She was ahead of it. And she said, there's more people go to zoos than all professional sporting events combined. Mm. That's crazy. So then she says, guess the number. Nobody's even close. 310 million people in the United States, 150 million people go to zoos. Zoos is one of the fastest growing. Mm -hmm. So Mm. when you look at our zoo, it's kids from in strollers Mm -hmm. to about fifth grade. And after that, they're too cool, <laughs> you know. But it's uh, so they're out there and they're there and and it's uh, doing it. We just purchased a train; it'll be here this week, and that'll be that'll going be around. Fun. Yeah, yeah, just uh, the kids will fun see it, and, and uh, you know, we sell our stuffed animals and plush and stuff, yeah. and we make sure it's low enough so they can grab it, and the grandpa's mm-hmm. got to pay for there it. You go. <laughs> Selling techniques, right? <laughs> You also put on a lot of events. Can you talk about some of those? Uh, We do. This weekend is Baby Animal Day, and we just had a baby buffalo born, and we got baby cows and baby kangaroos, baby wallabies. So So we just have a lot of stuff, which is really big. People like Baby Animal Days. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of uh, charity stuff for autism. We do a lot of stuff at night where they come out and be with puzzles, a giraffe, and we do special stuff with that. 
uh, doing a thing for uh, the local Christian radio station. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to get back, I mean, in life and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just figure out, figure what everything's about, you know, and be mm -hmm. humble. And, you know, don't believe the press that everything everybody says, boy, everything you touch to turns to gold. Mm -hmm. You'll go down in a hurry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do your research and what you do. And I'm sure your guys' business did here. And you look at product, what sells and what doesn't sell. And mm -hmm. is it worth it to keep it? You know, and that's mm -hmm. what it's about. That's the fun part to me, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. the business grow and doing it. And We and love doing it. Something yeah, good. it's that interaction with the people that come to mm -hmm. you. We enjoy that so much. And, you know, it's even one reason why, you know, we're so happy to be able to do the podcast to talk to the people we work with and then have them talk to the people, you know, that come in for orders or whatever the case may be to just see, you know, we are just all people with so many different facets in life and so forth. But, you know, I think that mis is missing sometimes with what we do, but you do that all the time. I, I can't imagine with the animals um, that there's something about animals when you're around them, though. It just makes everybody just feel calmer, happier, whatever the case may be. Um, I bet you see that a lot with the people when they come in versus when they go out. Um, those animals have, I don't know, such a big energy field or whatever it is yeah. that they have, you know. It puts smiles on their creatures. face, especially yeah. the babies. And and uh, and people like to, we do uh, meet and greets with the animals when we get out there. And I'll give you an example. Like if I'm standing in front of a giraffe, we have Puzzles and Sudoku as our two giraffes. <laughs> and we got a little alpaca, and his name's yeah. Jigsaw. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so we got the three of them out there, and they like hearing like giraffe facts. A giraffe is the tallest land animal. A human has seven vertebrae. A giraffe has seven vertebrae, except mm -hmm. their vertebrae is the size of your fist. Mm -hmm. um, highest blood pressure of any animal to get it up. Mm -hmm. Their heart's 25 pounds. And when you start talking and doing that, people don't like to read. Mm -hmm. You look up and there's 30 people around you. Mm -hmm. Then they start asking you questions. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can get the kids at an early age to understand that and do that, um, you're always getting... Um, uh, people say, oh, what about zoos and this? There's a lot of animals that's been brought back and kept out of extinction from zoos. Mm -hmm. And zoos aren't cages anymore. When I grew up, they're enclosures. Mm -hmm. So they really think of the animal first, and you want it, the animal. Animals come up, they want the interaction. My camels that do camel rides, they fight to do camel rides. <laughs> <laughs> they want to get over and get the lead on them because it's part Aww. of their day. And it's you, not yeah. hard work for them. They love it. They get treats. So it's and you've handled them from the time they're young, mm -hmm. and you interact with them every day. Absolutely. So they, you have something so different in the way that your animals do interact with the people that come, which yeah. is amazing. Well, this is so. this is something that, and uh, when we have a baby animal, baby camel, and it's born, we breathe on it, we blow in its face. And those animals know me when I walk up. They make noises like a camel noise is what they tape for Chewbacca in Star Wars. Oh, oh that's cool. That was a camel. So you hear the rrr. <laughs> so when Chewie looks at me, Chewy. he makes that noise. He knows Chewy. it's me. I breathe on him, and he knows. Rrr. It's crazy. <laughs> It's so cute. But That's all the baby cool. animals, Aww. their senses are so much more than humans. Yeah. So when you do that type of stuff, it's yeah. so important for vets and get close. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, we need yeah. to give Chewie a shot. You know, he comes over, we give him a shot. We're not chasing him for 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm too old to run a camel down. <laughs> Were you always, like, did you always have animals? Is this something that yeah. when you, I mean, it, to have this many to go from having, you know, a couple and having to figure out all of your vet things yeah. and how to take care yeah. of them, how did... Well, they kicked me out of sixth grade because I wouldn't shave, so I had to find a job, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting home when they kicked me out, you know? And, uh, you know, I always I always had animals at home, and I'd take them to school, pet fox, and do things. Oh, and that, to school, pet I, fox. I, yeah, I was that kid, okay? Okay, so and, this uh, is from yeah. a young... Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. that's cool. So I've always had them, and I've had different businesses, mm -hmm. and any business is pretty much the same. You do your research, you see if there's a need, how can you move your product? Yeah. And ours was, we're going to build a zoo. And everybody said, what are you, nuts? <laughs> Toledo Zoo's 20 miles away. They, yeah. you know. I said, well, we're going to do it a little different. <laughs> and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to start small and we're going to grow it. Because you don't go to the bank and say, I want to buy a draft for $120,000. <laughs> <laughs> <Really? laughs> 
<laughs> you know, they laugh you out the door. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, so you just kind of grow slow and you do it. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's what we, we did. And like I say, we'll be over 100,000 guests this year. And uh, you look for things, the age group they want. So we're going to do a little uh, merry-go-round because that's the age our mm-hmm. kids are. We're not going to do a Ferris wheel. Mm-hmm. So in any business, you have to think, what fits my business? And it's... Uh, so that's the next thing okay. that we're going to get. Nobody knows that yet, so don't tell. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we won't tell anybody. Don't worry. No. <laughs> so are you at capacity? Is this is there more growth for you? I mean, the merry-go-round, the train. So you do have a couple more things. That- yeah, we've only we're only used about fifteen of the forty-one acres. Oh wow! And uh, and we just bought more the house come. next door. We're using that for an Airbnb. Came oh, nice. to five acres. Oh, wow! So we have that, and it's rented all the time. Oh wow! And. Nice. Uh, and that, that's that's crazy. My nephew, I'm 61 years old. My nephew calls me up and says, "You need to do an Airbnb." I said, <laughs> "I said, what's an Airbnb?" He's laughing at me. He goes, "Now, Uncle Joe, sit down." <laughs> so I sit down, and he says, "It's the largest hotel chain in the world, and they don't own a room. They just use your house Airbnb." And he goes, mm-hmm. "You know about Amazon?" I go, "Yeah, I know about Amazon." He says, "It's the largest store. Don't own a store." I said, okay. How about Uber? I said, I've never used it. He said, well, it's the largest taxi service that don't own a car. So this is what's happening in our world that me and yeah, Debbie, right, we exactly. have it. Yeah, we're, we're going, this is different. When yeah. we grew up, go fund me when I was a kid, yeah. get the lawnmower and a gas can. <laughs> right. okay? You know, it's, uh, yep. so it's, it's just a different world, you know, and you got to, you kind of adapt to it and you figure it out. And I, I laugh because I don't get half of it. You know, I tell my kids, they're all in their 30s and here, fix dad's phone, you know. Um, <laughs> they go, we can't. You ran over it with a car. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, my. It's so cute. So were there any animals that you were, like, surprised to have gotten, like, as you were going through the business? I'm sure, like, when it came time oh, to buy a giraffe, expect, yeah. you would have been... Very surprised yeah. that it was like actually happening. Yeah, yeah, I think that's some of the stuff because I re- I remember the beginning. You think I'm going to do this and this, and I'll never be able to afford a giraffe, you know. And uh, and all of a sudden it grew, and I seen the numbers, and I said, you know, giraffe is makes you a real zoo. They used to call you a petting zoo. Now it makes you a real zoo. <laughs> when you get a giraffe, it's that that stage. Mm-hmm. Then we get two giraffes, you know. Um, so yeah, there's different animals and. We're, we're right now. We just got our federal license, and <clears throat> we have a lot of exotic animals. But we also want to teach the kids about animals indigenous to the United States. So we got a federal permit. So we have eagles, hawks, and owls, and all those wow, type of critters, cool. and uh, so they can understand. And one of the things you teach the kids when you got a bunch of school kids there, a six pack of pop, the little things that go on the top, yeah. the plastic. We show pictures of those over top of eagles' heads, mm-hmm. yeah. and they mm-hmm. die. Mm-hmm. You cut those up. Mm-hmm. You know, those are things, and they can go home, and they can say. It's like the guy mows his grass, and he pushes it out in the road, mm-hmm. and a motorcycle goes down. Mm-hmm. And once you realize that can hurt somebody on a motorcycle, yeah. you'll never will blow that grass That's on the right. road again. That's mm-hmm. right. And it's the same thing with that stuff. If you can start them young, mm-hmm. and you can teach them, mm-hmm. um, that's what's so important. Look, if you grew up in a house and you're a Michigan fan, you're a Michigan fan forever. If you're Ohio State, it's forever. If you could teach them something, whatever, when they're young, it sticks. And it's no different teaching them good things than right things. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I am looking. We counted the animals every day. So if anybody knows of a used ark, only (laughs) used 40 days and 40 nights, I don't want a new one. I want a used one. Somebody said it was sitting on the side of a mountain in Turkey, but I don't know. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. All this so rain funny. around here, right, there. Oh, Deb? yeah, exactly. It's, you like, know? crazy. Yeah. 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 Do Unbelievable. You, do you have any animals that you're, like, looking to get that you have your eye on that you don't have yet? Well, i got to make sure Patty's not listening. To <laughs> she, she's got a rule that you got to have an enclosure before you bring it home. And how that happened, she was driving home from work, and I said... She goes, what are you doing? I go, driving. She goes, I'll be home in 20 minutes. I'm going to be home in 20 minutes with a monkey. <laughs> so I said, can you stop at Kroger's and get my prescriptions? <laughs> so that would save me 10 minutes. So I get Micaiah the monkey home, oh my goodness. the one that pulls the chain with the Cheerios, and I get him in a cage that I had him building all day. 
I get him in there and I take off. <laughs> and she comes home and goes, where'd this monkey come from? And all the staff's trained to go, what monkey? <laughs> <laughs> so then the rule oh, changed. So right, right now we're looking at stuff, but um, I would like to... We have two black bears, and we want to do a whole black bear enclosure out back with the swamp and that, mm -hmm. and I really would like to do something big with them, maybe have 15, 20 of them in about three acres. Wow. That would be cool. And a uh, feeding station above. We're getting ready to do a draft feeding station. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things. Um, I think every year we'll add one or two exhibits. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. We do uh, a ton of five weeks of... Um, Camps right now, all educational. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So those are really big, and they're growing. They fill up really fast. Mm -hmm. The kids love them. Sometimes they're making birdhouses, oh. and they're learning how to take care of animals. Oh, I would yeah. have loved that when I was little. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Would have loved it. Yeah. Now, are you the only one that gets to say, yes, they can come, what animals can come or not come, or do you get other people who are uh, getting these animals for you as well? No, they they got to, you know, ask me or Patty before before they come in. Um, some animals we just, it, it doesn't, somebody just offered me seven llamas every day, and it just doesn't fit mm -hmm. what we have right now and stuff, and it's not, we already got alpaca, so it's something that mm -hmm. we don't need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, uh, we get into a lot of the rescues. All of our eagles, hawks, and that mm -hmm. came they go to rehab places first. If they can't be let loose, mm -hmm. they'll come to us, and that's a permit. We have to have so many people going through and teaching the kids. And mm -hmm. and uh, usually a bird, it's a wing injury because birds' bones are hollow, mm -hmm. and then they can't, even if they fix them up and they look good, it's mm -hmm. still not the same. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's uh, um, we're always looking for, you know, I would love to get a hippopotamus. Oh, I mean, I'd so have cool. to build a, some barns and stuff, mm -hmm. but we I take zoo-cations. We don't go on vacations. <laughs> so, so when I go away for a week or 10 days, I visit seven zoos. I want to look wow. at their latches. I want to look at their fencing. I want to look at, oh, that's neat, and I got my pictures going, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we don't try to reinvent the wheel. We try mm -hmm. to see what works at a place. And you can see, here's one we're going to get in the next year is otters. Okay. Otters are fun. They're swimming. They're up everywhere. But go look at the enclosure where they're at. There's 30 okay. people around an otter, and there's nobody at this one. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, a business plan. When you're looking, you know they're going to love them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, we just got offered. We just got offered a beaver out of Arizona, and his name is Frenchy Toast. <laughs> <laughs> Frenchy Toast. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. So and all of our animals, our dogs, is bow and arrow, and our you know, the camels all got neat names. Our two of our monkeys is uh um oh my gosh, the baby's whole wheat and uh I mean it just <laughs> yeah. Do you name them or do they come No, named? well some of them come and we name most of them, you know. Yeah. But uh yeah, it's uh yeah. and people like and they the, all have like names. the names. Yeah. The two pigs, the one got out all the time, so we called him Albert Schweinstein. <laughs> and his buddy's Kevin Bacon. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So, so our cute. climate here, how does that does that affect? Like, it probably affects your you can't do this year round, and then does it affect how you take care of the animals and certain animals? Like, you wouldn't be surprised. Zebras stay out. Camels stay out. They really? roll in the snow and all that. But your birds and uh, kangaroos need a little bit of heat. Wallabies don't. Um, the giraffe barn is heated floors with two wings. A lot of animals can go in. Hmm. And uh, but yeah, we know which ones can and can't. And I mean, I've had bobcats in my house and kangaroos and babies. We bottle wow. feed them. And when they start jumping on the bed in the middle of the night, it's time to go to the barn. <laughs> you know, oh yeah. Right now, there's a baby deer in there, so uh -huh. a little white tail. And uh, yeah, Jim pulled up with two baby calves yesterday, and. Uh, got a pot belly pig yesterday that's on a leash. It was in Ottawa Hills, and the oh, wow. police say you can't have a pot belly pig in Ottawa Hills. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's at a very good home now. I can yeah. say that, too, though. They yeah. should be happy. That's good. So he, wow. he came out, and he's on a leash. He's really good. So it'd be great for education. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do some stuff at schools, too. We'll go out to try to teach him. And, and uh, 
We weren't allowed to name the cows, you know, sirloin or uh, T bone, you know, I told them. <laughs> yeah. Educational names. Yeah. 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 The experience so. that people can have when they come, uh, personal experiences, can they um, book something just to do like a personal experience? Yeah, they and do. what could they do? They can do get it with the bobcat, with the, um, the sloths, the giraffes. Mm-hmm. You know, those mm-hmm. are all things that they can do. They book ahead of time mm-hmm. online. They come in. We do them at 11 o'clock at 2 o'clock so our staff will be done feeding. They can get with them, walk them back, mm-hmm. and it's up close and personal. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can pet them, touch them. Photographers? Can you bring a photographer yeah. out for yeah. professional photos? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boy. And if you're going to be with the wolves, we got three finger Johnny taking care of them. So. <laughs> those are... How many staff members do you have? Oh... I think about 20. People ask me how many people work here, and I tell them half of them, you know. (laughs) So, uh, 3,000 comedians out of work, and I'm trying to do one. (laughs) No, we got about 20 great, great people. They get along. You know, they all got an area to do, which we call the front barn up at the gift shop, the woods, and the back barn. That's where the giraffes and buffalo. Mm -hmm. So there's three areas you can work in. Mm -hmm. And then we have people know them all in case somebody calls in mm-hmm. sick or something yeah. happens and mm-hmm. you know do you offer internships at all we or? do we got some interns there right now mm-hmm. cool nice yeah mm-hmm. so we do interns one girl's in vet school and different things and some kids that want to go and do it they want to say hey does this work do we like mm-hmm. it and then it doesn't hurt on their resume that they worked at a zoo yeah so. mm-hmm. um when you get your animals and i'm going back to fencing i know you use some of our fencing did you um, find out what they were behind and then the different types of fencing that you have for your animals? Um, how did you research that or whatever? How did you, you know, because you have to be sure that they're Correct. in that area. In uh, regulated by the USDA, so we have a 10-foot um, high tensile on the outside mm-hmm. for everything. Mm-hmm. But then when we get into, let's get into my primates and I have uh, baboons. That has to be a nine gauge wire that we know that's boom, boom, boom that we buy. And we'll look like our alligator has to be a five foot fence, da da da. The regulations mm-hmm. of the animal. It goes of, by of that. The USDA, yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 So, um, and there's different things like uh, the rabbits and clothes you walk through. They want a house that they can go to at night so the hawks don't get them. And, and uh, we got a lot of baby rabbits. And, uh-huh. and the kids, when they're real young, they want the smaller animals because they're not intimidated and they get a little bigger. They want the giraffes and the stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. it just yeah. depends on the age of the kid. And and I, I get a kick out of, I'll say, now look at this lady here. They've got a 10-month-old baby that knows nothing. And I go, how does this, how does she like it? Oh, she just loves this. But it's the mother talking. She loves <laughs> it. You know, the baby's just looking ahead with a pacifier, you know. <laughs> She just loves this place. She can't wait to come back. So the mom's happy. She's the driver, right? Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but we we enjoy what we do. I love what I do, and and uh, it and has that, to be fun every day. Yeah, it just has to be something new every day, mm-hmm. and just something interesting every day. So yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. part of it. Whatever you do in life, make it fun. Joke about it. We're joking here today. Life's so short. Yeah. You can't take it with you. Yep. Yeah. Try to help people and do the right that's thing, right. and I think you'll be. That's right. You'll feel so much better about yourself. I agree. You know, and that's yeah. huge. Yeah, and, and that's uh, a big thing when you're in business. If you can do that, I think that just means so much. That's what we want to do so badly too, as well. I mean, it's in a in a different way for each type of business, but we do feel that you know, mm-hmm. and that's part of the reason for the podcast to meet so many interesting people that come to see us. We're so glad that you would tell us all about your your zoo and and what's in the future for you like what are you thinking of in the future now for well, your my zoo? staff yell at me because i'm always building and they tell me rome wasn't built in a day <laughs> and i told them i wasn't a foreman on that job either <laughs> <laughs> so so i'm looking at uh some more concrete the drive through nativity scene oh, okay uh we're going to do a whole drive through the kids can stay in the car half a mile of Paved uh, black or cement that's already down, mm-hmm. um, you know, just some wow. some things like that. That's that's huge, and that'll be so in December. In? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and nice. they can drive through or walk through or drive how is through. that? Okay, drive mm-hmm. through. And if they want to yeah. get out and have experience with our train that's coming this Thursday, they can get in that too. Okay. But one of the neat things about there's a lot of zoos that 
uh, you can walk through and they do all the lights. Mm -hmm. It's based on temperature and weather. In your car, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. You got right. your heater on, you drive through, you How see. Nice for the kids. Yeah, yeah. they're in their pajamas. Take Grandma and Grandpa comes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Sweet. They don't have to you know, walk. Can, yep. Yeah. You know. And they can see the animals yep. and the nativity scenes. Yeah. How that's how cool. neat is that? That's so, going to be wonderful. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's mm -hmm. the next thing, but if you ask me next month, there'll be something new. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll have to have you come back. <laughs> so people visiting, do they need to bring their lunches? Do you have provide yeah. any food there for people? We or? have just ice cream and snacks. we got a pavilion area. They can bring their own food. Okay. Um, yesterday or day before, there was eight school buses there, wow. all different from all over. And uh, they're starting to find us. And we got picnic areas. We have, um, we have a thing called furs, feathers, and I can't remember what the last word <laughs> But we got a guy, it's an education guy from uh, uh, Toledo Zoo that works for us now, and that's mm. all he does. Wow, And cool. in there, and he's bringing the animals in and walking and showing them and explaining. Wow. So that's going on. The rest of the kids go out to the zoo. They come back in and do that. Uh -huh. So all day long it's happening. We got, uh, we got guides with them just to mm -hmm. answer questions, you know, because mm -hmm. the biggest thing, walk by an animal and see it, but tell them about a sloth, mm -hmm. that a, sl a giraffe sleeps Less than an hour a day, and a sloth sleeps 20 hours a day. Really? Mm. Yeah. Less than an hour a day? Less than an hour a day, yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. You don't even think it could stay alive. but Yeah. And the males yeah. are the most vulnerable because they are not in the herd. And when a draft, his legs, his neck's shorter, and they have to spread their legs mm -hmm. out. So in the water and holes is where they're, they're vulnerable. Mm. And right now, giraffes have went down from 147,000 a while to 97,000. So through breeding programs mm -hmm. and stuff, they're trying to bring them back. And if you look at, in 1972, alligators were pretty much wiped out in the United States. They're all back. Hmm. So you can do it if you want to. In 1900, there was only 100,000, less than 100,000 deer in Michigan. Today, there's a million three. Hmm. Because of hunting laws and fish mm -hmm. and the hatcheries and putting fish mm -hmm. back. So there's a lot of great things that can be done. Mm -hmm. Teaching the kids, educating them, mm -hmm. having rules, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. important. Yeah, it is. It is. And like you said, to teach them at a young age, my goodness, that's Absolutely. that's what they need, you know, mm -hmm. grow up with it and go from there. Yeah. So, okay. And the animals teach you so many things. I mean, even us as well, but they just are always, I think, showing us things that we didn't know. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say, you know all about this. Oh, no, no, I'm still learning, mm -hmm. always learning, yeah. always learning. Absolutely. So, yeah. 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 The animals are your everyday thing. What do you like to do as a hobby when you leave? You say you, you take zookations, but do you ever just want to go and, and get away from all of that, or is that still your everyday no, passion? it is my everyday passion. Wow. I've had a lot of businesses. I've owned a marina, and I've owned self-storage, and I've owned... You know, I have a golf course I own now in a subdivision that's just getting built out at the last part. And the animals I love. I love seeing the people. I love seeing the young kids. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just it's mm -hmm. just what I love doing. And at, when I was a youngster, you know, I always raised animals and had. My parents never knew what was going to be. You know. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, yeah. So I, I, I enjoy it. I love it. And I yeah. love the... I love the business end of it, too, to watch it grow mm -hmm. and be able to do things. And I tell people, um, you know, if I, if this isn't profitable, they don't, they're don't they not taken care of as well and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I had a lady tell me from the USDA, said, boy, I just want to do a rescue and raise mules. I said, well, how are you going to fund it? Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. going to go broke. You mm -hmm. can't feed them. It won't work. Right. There has to be a business plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. anything you do... And when you buy your, your horses and your right. horse fence, and are you going to teach like Jim does? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes right. out, he teaches and does. If right. it's just going to be a few horses for your family, you know, this is what it's right. going to cost, and it's called cost to operate. It's called progressive mathematics. The mm -hmm. dollars got to mm -hmm. add up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If the dollars don't add up, you're not going to be in business. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're Warren Buffett and you have a business. If it's not working, he shuts it down right. at some point. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's all part of it, you know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, Making money is not a bad word because it can keep it up and make it going great. Right. My golf course, if I don't get enough golfers, I can't fertilize it as well yeah, and do everything. Right. So that's it's right. uh, it's all part of life, and you got to figure it out. And if you enjoy what you do, if it's not immoral and legal, illegal, go do mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. but the passion, I'm sure, is what drove you guys here oh, when you is. started small. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. Passion carries you so far. It takes yeah. you places you never thought you could go, Absolutely. and it just carries you. It does. Mm -hmm. And opens up those doors to things that um, you didn't expect. Just like yourself, I think you probably didn't plan on having a zoo someday, but all of a sudden, boom, those opportunities come, and Absolutely. you can turn it into something that's, you know, yeah, your passion. What you're doing, you know? good for the communities, and yeah. and uh, we're in Lambertville, Michigan, and we're the number one attraction now, you know? Mm. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. And the sloth experiences, they drive two or three hours away to, wow. come, to come to it. Mm. So that's an animal there that gets us more exposure, and people go back. Facebook and stuff, when me and Debbie were growing up, there was no such thing, yeah. you know? And today, with that and the social media, how that word is yeah. getting out yeah. and growing, that... And one of the things I always tell people... You always heard of you have to ask for the order. Mm -hmm. If I get online and I'm doing something, I have my girl does it, I said, ask for the order this week. Ask to share that we have baby animal days. Mm -hmm. When you just ask <clears throat> online, yeah. hey, will you share that? It lit up with hundreds and hundreds. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they just like it. Does that make right. sense? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want you to like it, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I want mm -hmm. you to share it. Yeah. So you have to ask for the order. Mm -hmm. It's no different when you're out and you're selling something or buying something. You ask the customer, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it's no wonder you're so successful with everything you touch. So no. <laughs> we can uh, see it. Yeah. That's, not, that's not true. I, I'd laugh if you, you can't believe you, your own press when people tell you that. You got to do what you know, yep. not try to go out in something else, and you have to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people say, well, let's go do this, buy a hotel. I know nothing about hotels. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to go broke <laughs> when you don't know mm -hmm. nothing. Which are good words for people with their horses, too, because anything that is an expense like that, you know, you're going to put expenses into it. Mm -hmm. You do have to plan and know, because otherwise you can't take care of them when you're talking about animals, too. That's a whole other thing. You've got mouths to feed. It's live, you know, it's not mm -hmm. like a, a a commodity that's not a live commodity. So, yeah, and it's important for people to realize that. That's, that's yeah, you have to take care of them. You know, and so. if you could afford to do that, pass it on and let kids come to your place and come yep. to your house and if you yeah. enjoy it. and yep. That's that's the neat part of it. Mm -hmm. I grew up with in uh, Whiteford Township, a little area, and the neighbors had horses and donkeys, and I remember Pappy Jack was a donkey, and I got to go over there and see it all the time. You know, it wasn't mine, but the people, Mr. Mr. Agner, wanted you to come over, those little Aww. kids, and I loved it, you know. Let's go see Pappy Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. So, yeah. so much for you when you're little. And it's building memories. Yeah. It's building memories, and when you build good memories, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, that's yeah. the good part. So. Yeah. You're so right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking oh, time out welcome. of your day to come um, yes. record with us. Yes. We hope you enjoyed listening to our podcast and encourage you to share with all your equestrian family and friends. You can tune into the Late Night Riders podcast show every Friday night. Each episode will be uploaded exclusively on YouTube, where you can subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our latest shows. Do you have a topic you'd like to discuss? We want to hear from you. You may email us at podcast at ramfence.com or feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you again for listening. Thank you so much Thanks, for Jones. being here. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>